We are about five months into the Duterte administration with one bellwether of economic performance looking at us straight in the face, and that is a property market. Now, to provide a concise look into how robust or risky the real estate sector is, we're joined by Monique Pronove, CEO of Pronove Thai & Associates. Monique, good to have you with us. Good morning, Kintin. Well, take us through the state of Philippine real estate now that we're five months into the administration and as we close the year. All right. Indeed, we are five months into the Duterte administration, and we have good news uh, to share on the Philippine property market. Um, I must say, though, that whilst um, having said that, I think it is, um, we have to credit that uh, the performance of the real estate market uh, this year has been uh, due to the good um, performance of the Aquino administration. So there's a carryover effect it, there. It is a carryover effect. And so um, for, the, for the Duterte administration, whatever that they will have to put forward will be will be um uh will be effect affected by uh, by next year so you're looking at a good foundation to build on essentially that's right well, what metrics are we looking at i mean like one of the things we're obviously looking at is foreign demand and local demand tell us how we're well positioned or you know relatively positioned vis-a-vis -vis our neighbors in in asia and i think we have some statistics here to show it as yes well. we actually have three good news one is that the philippine market has been one of the best performing markets in the asia pacific um we have very low supply um and in fact we have also great demand the great demand has been very resilient over the past few years and um, we've seen uh, at least for this year we've seen uh, rental rental mark uh, the rental um, rental and capital market actually grow um, at a record level which is around 35 35 percent uh, we're looking year here year. yeah we're looking here as well as the vacancy rates I mean in the national capital region that is the average we, we took this from a slide that you sent us but yes. interesting enough okay you're looking at obviously increased demand supply is going down vacancy rates obviously one way to look at the industry how do you think it's going to be doing coming into next year into the next year we have a, a peak supply um, we will have around 1 million that will be coming online but the good news also is that around 12 percent of that supply in 2017 is already pre-committed um, and so that is that is where demand is coming from and most of that demand is actually from the ITBPO sector um, in 2018 it's the same story as well we have around 18 percent that uh, that will be taken uh, that is pre-committed already right. so um, just looking at this this is around three um, percent that is actually considered a very unhealthy uh, vacancy rate normally you would have around five percent to make uh, to allow for corporations to actually grow within your building especially if they're going through scale and anchor tenants coming in exactly right? now one of your anchor tenants I will talk about the BPO sector <laughs> later is the diplomatic sector in the multilaterals that's 30 percent you service 30 percent of that market you know given the fact that you're, you're hearing from them your key clients what are you what are you hearing from them in terms of concerns and risks or opportunities actually um, that is another good news um, that is one of the great stories there has been a reignition of diplomatic relations between the Philippines and the European countries we have seen three um, diplomatic uh, embassies actually reopen in the Philippines one is the Royal Danish Embassy that op reopened last year uh, the next one is uh, the Swedish Embassy that just reopened in November and the Hungarian Embassy will be opening next year so we are seeing um, once you see uh, um, um, embassies open they bring in trade missions as well uh, we saw that the Swedish Embassy actually brought in 70 uh, of their delegates and same with the Royal Danish Yeah, the head of Swedish business coming in the Bloomberg as well. Now, you talk about that, uh, you know, that sector. Let's talk about the BPO sector. Are you seeing any risks going forward given that they're major locators and this vis-a-vis -vis the fact that the Duterte administration is putting an outward push towards real estate development and inclusive growth in the countryside? We don't see, um, we don't see any risk at all, even with the, with the Trump um, presidency. Um, what we're seeing is uh, actually Trump is looking at higher value manufacturing going back in to the United States, but um, we also serve the BPO industry, and our clients are saying that they will scale up in the Philippines, and not just in, in Metro Manila, but outside, the centralized. So certainly orange to apples comparison. I mean, on the balance, certainly good news, a lot of uh, foundation to build on. Appreciate your insights, Monique, and I hope to have you on the show as the, you know, the property sector welcomes 2017. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much.